Would you build your own house on rented land? I didn't think so. It sounds like quite a bad idea. In today's video, I want to show you how the same concept applies when growing your handmade shop. I'm Deb and today we are talking about the difference between owning and renting your handmade shop. Now I'm not talking about real estate as in actually building a house, but the same concept really applies when it comes to marketing. If you've used Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Etsy, or any of those social media platform or handmade marketplaces in the past, then this video is especially for you. Here's my point. When you sign up for any of those platforms, you agree to their terms and condition. Now, you probably didn't read them. I know I surely didn't when I signed up for my accounts because let's be honest, it's boring, it's long, and most of us don't really understand what those stand for. But what I do say, every single one of them, is that those platforms are free to make any changes to the way the platform works pretty much whenever they feel like it without asking you in advance if you are happy with those changes or not. This shouldn't come as a shock. I'm sure you've been through a few Instagram algorithm changes and Facebook page updates and all of these things that usually make the internet literally implode. When those changes are minor ones, then that's kind of okay. Like, we're not gonna make a big deal out of it. But when these are big changes that can affect your business and your bottom line dramatically, then we have a problem. Now, as I was saying, I'm sure you're familiar with Etsy algorithm changes, Instagram algorithm changes. Oh, and remember more recently when Facebook announced that it was going to be much harder for your followers to see the content of your Facebook page? That's kind of big news. And for those who have spent the last five years working really hard at building a big following on the Facebook platform, that news really, really hurt. When these things happen, when you're really, really reliant and dependent on one platform to run your business like Facebook or like Etsy, and then suddenly the algorithm change and your customers can't find you because your SEO doesn't seem to be working anymore, or Facebook just saying your reach is basically nothing right now, what happens is it's like someone has cut a line of communication that you had with potential customers. Do we want that? No thanks. This only happens if you've built your business on rented land. Now, what's the alternative? Oh, you know what I'm about to say. Email marketing. Building your email list is the best way to do marketing these days because you have a direct access to your subscribers, your email list subscribers and customers and no one can get in the way and tell you, oh, sorry, from tomorrow, you won't be able to email your list. There's been a global, you know, internet algorithm change. That is not a thing that exists, right? Once you have an email list with people on it, you can decide when you want to email them. And the only thing that can get in the way of you emailing them is if they unsubscribe from your list, which is okay. This happens every day and it's not a problem at all. But no other company is going to get in your way and in the way you communicate with potential customers and past customers. That's what owning your business and the land you're building it on is. Your email list is your most important asset when it comes to growing and marketing your handmade shop. And I really, really want you to understand that so that you can put it at the top of your to-do list because it is so crucial to the success of your handmade business. Now, am I using my Facebook page and trying to grow the number of people who like my page every week? Yes. Do I have a Facebook group? Yes. Do I use Pinterest to share my free resources? Yes. Do I use Instagram? Sure do. But all of these things are always secondary to growing my email list. Truth be told, I didn't really care when Facebook changes were announced because I have much more people on my email list than I do liking my Facebook page. So even though it was kind of like dramatic when Facebook said, hey, the reach on your Facebook page is going to be a little bit lower now, I didn't feel it was going to be really damaging to my business because I still had a direct line of communication with my email subscribers. I own my business rather than renting it. So Pinterest, Etsy, Instagram, Facebook, they're all wonderful. Should you use them and leverage them? Yes. But if you're always going to be renting a space on their platform, meaning that in the end, you don't make the calls they do, then I need you to be thinking differently and to start growing your email list 
right now. When it comes to growing your handmade shop, remember that building your email list is the only way you can own your business and your marketing efforts, and that should always be your top priority. Now, I'd love to know and let me know in the comments below, are you trying to build your email list? I really want to know and I'd love to know what's working, what's not working for you. If you like this video, make sure to share it with your friend, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. A new video is released every Tuesday to help you start, grow and profit from your handmade shop. I also have a bunch of free resources to help you grow your handmade business that you can access for free and I'll just put a link to that library just below the video. Make sure you click on that link. I'll see you next Tuesday.